My name is Uma Chinda. I was born Chinda Rohoma Uma. I'm from River State. I'm 29 years old. In December, I'm the first of six children. We're orphans. We'll try. Kiss. Boy. Rice. Dad. Sisters. Adventure. Four clips. Key. I'm smelling because it's tall. Last kiss. Somewhere in the middle, not either of the both of them. We grew up with our mom mostly, but I had a different relationship with my father. I really loved my dad because he was just big and he was never around. But when he comes home, my mommy was always happy. So his presence meant she was happy and if she's happy, we're all happy. So I really loved my father, still love him. My father was my first love. I used, to, I used to wish I was married to him. Although knowing what I know now, I don't think so. I grew up in the family house. So basically, we're not in our own house. Um, we shared the same compound with my grandparents. And it was really hard for my mom because I saw her come from, she gave up so much to be married to my father. And I don't think what she got was what she expected. So I think in many ways that affected my outlook on relationships where I don't even want to manage, I don't want to, I feel like everybody should be 100 and then come together and then we compliment each other. I don't want to complete anybody. I just want to compliment whoever I end up with. I got into the university at the age of 14, 15 thereabouts. Finished by 19, went into law school. Finished, worked in Abuja for a bit, lost my father, moved back to Port Harcourt. Oh, I should say that I lost my mom when I was in second year of university. I think I was 16 then, when my mommy passed on. And then it was, I had to learn about my siblings. I had to learn my father's needs. I had to play this role for all these people. And it, it didn't come first nature to me because I'm not that kind of person. I'm, I'm quite, I live in my head a lot. So being there for them was a new experience for me. I'm grateful for it. I was a bit resentful at first, but I'm grateful for the opportunity I had to be this mother to my siblings. My mother gave up a wonderful home and all of this comfort to marry my father. He didn't have anything. And she had to live in his family home with his mother and his father. She had to put up with his siblings. You know, all of their excesses, she had to put up with them because in our African setting, there are things that um, must pass, or I don't know how to speak the English even, but it was just really annoying seeing her wanting things and not being able to get it because he was training his siblings. My father was like this alpha male for both our family and his own family, for the nuclear and extended family. And he wanted to play that role to the fullest. And I think that was a big problem for us because he couldn't draw the line between his nuclear family and his extended family. And in many ways, I watched my mother struggle because she wanted more, she couldn't get it. Now, as a woman, I won't, I won't marry a man like my father. I mean, he was a lovely father, but I don't think he was the best husband. My idea of a, a fun time when I was in school was not being at home. Being on my bed in school and just catching up on my books. I used to travel when I read my books. I'd buy all these novels about different places and I just read. And when I read these books, I just become, I choose a character in the book and I become that character and I move to that world. So for me, I spent so much time being in that place, you know, and it's funny because people used to see me in school then and think, oh, this girl, this girl has nice clothes. This girl has nice shoes. Oh, she has it all. But I'd have given anything to be like them. They had parents, complete set of parents. They didn't have to take care of their siblings. You know, they could come and go as they wished. If my sibling was not feeling too good and my father was not in town, that means I had to leave school and come back home. I had aunties that helped, yes. But I had to be there for my siblings. Okay, first of all, you need to pay your tithes. 
like I don't care what anybody says about that. That's that's the number one thing on my list. I just need to know that you're paying your tithes because I need to know that if I'm going out with you, that means I'm I'm, I'm not a child. I need to get married soon. Yes, so I should know that in the event that things work out, then you're marriageable material because I know I am. So <laughs> I need to be sure that the person. So you have to pay your tithes. Yes very key belong to a church a bible believing church respect me respect me you may not love me as much as you want to love me or as much as your affair but love me like respect me because when you respect me there are a lot of things you won't do to me you know i want i want a man that will respect me as his wife respect me as his daughter and respects me as his mother. That's the kind of man I want to be with. So yes, I have to say that you respect me in all of these categories. I need to know that you're financially stable because nobody got time to suffer. I need to be sure that you can care for yourself, you can care for your family. And then love my siblings. I know they're annoying, but just love them. I think the first one for me would, have, would be when I was in I think nursery or oh, primary one, thereabouts, and I fell down from the swing and I tore a muscle or a ligament, I can't remember, and I had to be stitched and I remember the pain. It was horrible. I remember my father talking to me. I remember crying. I remember my mother crying. I didn't like the fact that I was causing my mom that much pain, but I felt good because my father I had my father's attention. So it felt and I, and then I got toy cars for, for that because I was trying to get toy cars and so ever and that was the only way I got it so I remember the pain and I remember my father telling me you can't cry you're not allowed to cry and even till date when I want to cry like when I when I when I'm in situations where I want to cry I remember when my mommy died and I wanted to cry I just remember that voice I remember as a child on the doctor's chair and I was in so much pain and my father kept on telling me you can't cry you're not allowed to cry you know and every time i get to the point where i feel all that pain and i really want to cry i just hear it it's not like something i can turn on or turn off it's just there saying you can't cry you're not allowed to cry i think it has actually made me happy because i don't allow myself feel pity i know it's healthy to cry you know and then sometimes I really want to cry, but I've gotten to the point where the tears don't really come out anymore. So it just frustrates me that I can't bring them out. And instead of sitting down with that frustration or battling with that frustration, I just do something that makes me happy. And I try not to dwell on issues for too long. You know, it's quite hard, but I try not to dwell on issues for too long. I just move from there or find a quick solution to it. Machinda is the is a business owner, god girl, <laughs> big sister, farmer. Yeah. You know, growing up, I was what everybody wanted me to be. I didn't know what I wanted to be. So while I was in secondary school, when everybody was choosing their major, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I just figured I, if I don't know what I'm going to be, I'd rather choose something simple, so art. But I didn't know what I wanted to be. And my father told me, if you're going to go for the arts, let it be a professional course, so law. And I managed to go through school, law school, and I practiced for a bit, but when I moved back to Port Harcourt, I was not interested in law. It was not my passion. I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, so I, I, had, I had a stint with administration, I did um, sales, I did HR, and then while I was in sales, because sales was like my last bit as a 9 to 5 person, I quit my job. Um, for the first six months, I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. I wasn't sure. I know someone just told me, oh, you like to grow things, why don't you have a fish farm? Now, in the time that I was looking for something to do, I was trying to decide on what business to go into. You know, I had people tell me, oh, you should go into fashion, you're a fashionable person. I mean, there's something between, there's a difference between being a fashionable person and actually 
making a career of it. I did not think I had the patience to make a career out of fashion. I mean, I can take care of myself and my body type. I'm not sure about the next person. So, so um, I set to do a lot of research on fish farming, spent a lot of time on YouTube, read articles, and I realized it was something that was related to my father's course. Um, he was a professor of microbiology and fisheries. So I referred to his books again, it made me feel closer to him. So I was really interested in it. And then over time, I invested in three ponds, you know, and well, like they say, the rest is history. I like to eat, and I like to eat well. And I don't understand why food is expensive because as far as I'm concerned, food is supposed to be cheap. I mean, if you take out um, cost of your plate and all of that, why is the food so expensive? I never really understand. I mean, I'm willing to pay good money for good food, but I feel like food should be cheaper than it really is. Um, I'm passionate about breakfast because when I wake up, I wake up grumpy in the morning. And the only thing that puts me in my place, so to speak, is food, you know. And I think that the... Um, in Nigeria, we don't we don't appreciate breakfast, and it's key, you know. It's like the healthiest meal of the day, and I wanted to share that experience with everybody. Hence, the Breakfast Club. It's been interesting. I've never been like the regular girl, mostly because I'm a know it all. So most guys want to be they want to be the alpha meal and I have been I have played um, I've been in position of authority for so long that I don't know how to I'm learning how to be submissive but I don't know how to downplay how smart I am I don't think anybody deserves that you know and I'm not going to apologize for who I am as a person so I remember being in school you know at the time when girls were being forced to have sex with boys, reference telling you, oh, if you don't love me, and I'm wondering, I don't love you because I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not going to marry you, you know. And I remember a lady telling me when I was in, I think my first year in university, one of our family friends, she said, the men that like you now, the men that are attracted to you now, will not be the same type of men that are attracted to you when you're in the university. They're not going to be the same type of men that are attracted to you when you're out of the university, when you start working. They're going to get better. So why will you rush with these ones now when you can get a better man ahead of you? And I thought about it, did not really understand it then. But over the years, it is true. The men that asked me out when I was in school, I am so glad I said no to them because the men that are asking me out now are a lot better. It's a bit of a gamble. Should I wait a few more years and get more men to ask me out? So, <laughs> yes. I think you get to a certain age where you don't you, you you you're a bit more honest with yourself. You know what you want. So you know not to compromise on what you want. Okay. I don't think the kind of man I want is um, unattainable. I just think I have to be a bit more patient. Okay, I'm going to say that I am somebody's perfect woman. Okay? I did not become this person in one day. I made a conscious choice and effort over the years to learn how to talk to a man, how to speak to my fellow women. I, I had to learn how to be more selfless. I had to learn how to dress. I had to learn how to cook. I had to learn how to pray. I had to learn how to give. I had to learn how to love myself so I can love the next person. Now, I made all of these efforts to be this person. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm very close to being perfect. Okay? And yes, I find perfection in Christ. However, if I made all of these efforts to be this person, um, build a career for myself, ensure that my finances are in order to a large extent, why do I have to compromise on my own standards? Because I thought to myself one day, this is the kind of man I want to have. I want a certain kind of man. And then I asked myself a question, because I'm very honest with myself. And I asked myself a question, does that man want me back? And at that time of my life, no. There was no way that kind of man would want me, because I was going to be a liability and a burden to him. It took me years to get to this point. I'm still on my way there. But I'm pretty sure that if I meet that kind of man now, I will be a viable partner to him. 
So if I'm if I if I've taken all of that time to build myself to form myself, why can't the next person take his own time to form his own self? Like I said, I don't believe in people completing each other. No, we're created differently. I believe you should be whole, be complete on your own, and I'll be complete on my own. And then we come together and we complement each other because. You know, right now, there's a high rise of divorce in society. The truth is that we place so much emphasis on the role people play for us. Oh, my husband isn't giving me this. Oh, my wife doesn't play this role. I mean, if you could do it by yourself, you won't put so much pressure on the next person because we're all going through so many issues. Okay, so why can't you sort yourself out? And then when we come together, it's easy. I mean, imagine a home where the man comes, he, he has a job, she has a job. They both come home, they're both tired, but he wants her to go into the kitchen. Now, if you can cook already, what stops you from going to the kitchen and cooking for her? If she can wash the car, what stops her from washing the car? I would ask him what my purpose is in life. Because I really want to be sure that I'm on the right path. I would ask him when my parents died. Did my youngest sister not deserve to have parents? Um, what did we do? differently from other children. Why can't, why, why did we have to grow without two parents? Did my father have to lose his wife? Why can't I get married with my parents there? Mm -hmm. I mean, my life would have been easier, my parents were alive, you know. But mostly I'd ask him why my youngest sister had to grow up without parents. Because I think she deserves to have parents. I think those are the questions I'd ask him. Sorry. My idea of a perfect date is actually staying at home and watching TV. With plenty of food. There has to be ice cream. I'm thinking something from Cadbury, um, Ben and Jerry's, like it should just be like a mix of different flavors and brands of ice cream, the good stuff. Then there should be pizza, you know, then maybe snail, basically there's a lot of food, there's a lot of stuff to munch on. Then TV, I'm not really a TV person though, yeah, it can be TV and then we sit in front of the TV and watch a movie together, talk about the movie. You know, I'll talk about a book we've read, something. But basically stay at home with food. Food is key. A lot of my father got to me. I mean, when I lost my mom, I had my father, so it was okay. But when I lost my father, I, had, I started thinking to myself, so who gets to take care of the children? Do I have to give up my life? Do I have to give up my job? What happens to me now? You know, and I felt like I was drowning. I remember when my father died, I had like his singlet that had his perfume on it. And then I'd sit down and I'd just be sniffing it. And I'd be wondering, how can I smell him and he's not here anymore? For me, I think the first few months after the death of my father were the worst. I'd wake up from, I'd wake up from my sleep and I'd realize I was crying. I didn't even know I was crying. You know, I'd have nightmares because I was, I had like the worst dreams where I, I, I was losing my, my siblings. I, I tend to call them my children. I think for me, that was the worst. It has to be the worst one, the worst experience ever. You know, that's a very good question because I ask myself that question every time. I'm of the opinion that love grows. Anything else is not love. I mean, even with my siblings, I love them a lot. I don't love them all the time. But over the years, I've learned to overlook. I think love is overlooking a lot of things. Love is, love is not holding a grudge. Love is knowing that this person is horrible. This person is rude and choosing to love them. That's love. Love is unconditional. Love is not something you choose. Oh, no, no, no I, I can't say choose. Love is not something you, you just say, oh, I love you. I mean, there's a difference between 
passion, physical passion for a person, and then really loving a person, you can, you know, there's a reason I said I want my husband to respect me. You don't, you don't respect someone you don't love, but you can love someone and not respect the person. I tell my old self to stop being so insecure. It doesn't matter if nobody loves you now, you will be loved. I tell my old self, take a deep breath and leave. And if I go forward in time, I'd ask myself, how has this fabulosity, how far have you gone with all of this fabulosity? I'd ask myself, are you married? <laughs> I'd ask myself, how good is sex now? Oh my God, I'd ask myself if we've finally done our lipo. Cause like, we're going to have lipo. And I'd ask myself if I still love all the decisions I made in the past. In business, I'll say take that risk. Just take it. You always win. Even if you think you're losing, you always win. In love, I'd say love yourself first. Because only when you love yourself, then you will know how you should be treated by other people. In life, I'd say live your best life. Because how can you say you're living if you're not really living? Um, Adore TV is a dream, it's giving so many people love opportunity. I'm so impressed, I'm so proud and happy to be a part of Adore TV for the opportunity, you know. It's a platform that is going to go places and I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be a part of it.